Hello everyone, welcome to another Versus Video Deck Tech. Uh, today we are playing Legacy. Uh, we have CVM here and I am Chris Anderson. Wait, no. All right, I'm Brian Brown doing, but I'm playing Elves, so. Close enough. Close enough, yeah. So, like I said, I am playing Elves. Uh, never played this deck before, so you have to bear with me if I uh, <laughs> don't exactly play it 100% optimally, but Basically, this, this is one of the cooler combo decks in Legacy. It's actually one of the simplest combo decks. There's not much thinking, not much math involved. So that's actually 100% untrue. <laughs> um, the interesting thing, interesting thing about Elves is even though you have just a bunch of one-drop Elves, um, so it looks like the deck's just straightforward, kind of an easy deck. Actually, it's one of the hardest decks to play in Legacy. Uh, there's a lot of math behind it. <clears throat> and when you start to combo off, you have to really... Uh, get maximum value out of all your cards to to do the most you can. Mm -hmm. So basically, the way the deck works is uh, two of the lands, Dried Arbor and Gaia's Cradle, are kind of the, some of the linchpins of the deck. Gaia's Cradle lets you generate an absurd amount of mana when you have a bunch of creatures in play. Uh, you can use that mana for massive Green Sun Zeniths to get Crater Hoof Behemoth. Uh, you can use it for Natural Order to get Crater Hoof Behemoth. Uh, basically, the idea of the deck is to just play Crater Hoof Behemoth. Uh, you can also use that mana with Glimpse of Nature to... Uh, you play Glimpse of Nature so that whenever you cast a creature, you get to draw a card. And then you just play a bunch of creatures out, and a lot of creatures are going to also generate you mana then. Uh, thanks to basically the way that Heritage Druid works and Net Nettle Sentinel works. Mm -hmm. So, as you're drawing a card and playing a bunch of creatures, you're also generating mana to play even more creatures. And uh, you get to a point where you can hopefully like draw into a natural order to get a crater hoof to just kill your opponent. Yep. And the interesting part about that portion of the strategy is, while Wirewood <coughs> Symbiote isn't particularly an elf, it works very well when you're just trying to get value out of Glimpse of Nature. And it works particularly well with Elvish Visionary when you're just trying to grind out your opponent with card advantage. You can use it to you know, untap your Deathrite Shaman to generate mana, or one of your mana elves to generate mana. But it also allows you to untap a creature, which Dried Arbor is also a creature, so that lets you uh, generate mana that way as well. Yeah, so yeah, uh, Wirewood Symbiote is actually one of the most important cards in the deck, despite being an insect and not an elf. Yeah. Um, for exactly the reasons that Chris said. And one of the things about this deck that's uh, unique is while it's a combo deck, and you can combo kill people with Crater Hoof Behemoth really quickly, uh, it can also play like the grindy creature role against a lot of decks where mm -hmm. you you use cards like Wirewood Symbiote in combination with Elvish Visionary to just draw a bunch of cards and you, you grind your opponent out of resources. Um, so the deck is basically, it's, it's very multifaceted. You can win a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can just Deathrite Shaman people out or just attack with a bunch of 1-1s and 2-2s. Two um, there's a lot of different ways to win with this deck and it, it, it's a... Uh, Part of, part of the reason that it's successful is because it has all those options. Absolutely. One of the things I'm actually surprised <coughs> to see missing from the list um, is that there was a period of time uh, where I know uh, Cranerson was advocating it. I, when I played Elves in an Open, I had one in my deck as well, but Azuri Renegade Leader uh, go works very well towards that plan when sometimes you just have to attack your opponent and kill them uh, and not be able to combo them out with Natural Order or a Glimpse of Nature. So we don't have an Azuri here in the deck, uh, I in the main deck, but you know that is a card that people can keep in consideration if they're interested in playing this deck. Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, another card that pushes it towards the more like fair mm -hmm. aspect as well. Uh, one of the other things I want to mention is Dried Arbor it really does so much for the deck. First of all, you can fetch it with any of your fetch lands. Uh, secondly, it's a creature and a land, so it produces mana by virtue of being a land. Also adds the creature count for Gaia's Cradle. So it's, it's very powerful in that regard. Um, lastly, you can use it to... Uh, you can use it with Creerian Ranger a lot of times to like bounce it back to your hand. If you if you need to use like Quirion Ranger's ability, which is good a lot of times if your opponent has like a Numazawa's Jet, mm -hmm. you can block with a Dryad Arbor, bounce it back with a Quirion Ranger, prevent that creature from dealing damage and them getting counters on the Jet. Yep. Um, and you can also use Wirewood Symbiote for the, the same, same role to block with a creature, bounce it back, and then uh, untap another creature. So there's a lot of interesting interactions with that. Um, so besides like the obvious creatures, we have Lanawar and Finhorn Elves. Uh, just just early mana producers. That, that's like your best turn one play is one of those guys. Uh, Deathrite Shaman is kind of the same thing. Um, also, you can win a lot of games just by draining your opponent out with Deathrite, especially when you're using um, 
like Quirion Ranger and Wirewood Symbiote to untap, to untap it. it over and over again. Um, and then there's Nettle Sentinel, which uh, Nettle Sentinel is very good in combination with Heritage Druid because Heritage lets you tap three elves to generate mana, mm -hmm. um, and Nettle Sentinel untaps every time you play a green spell and is an elf. So what you can do is you can like tap three elves, add three mana, cast a couple of green creatures, uh, untap your Nettle Sentinel, tap it again for mana, cast another green creature, untap them, tap them again. That's how you start to generating absurd amounts of mana. Yep. Um, you even can be bouncing your green creatures back to your hand <coughs> with Wirewood Symbiote to recast them, to generate more mana, draw more cards, and the whole time your opponent gets to sit there very, you know, very happy that this is happening because they're having a lot of fun. Yeah, they probably are having an ex absurd amount of fun. <laughs> uh, generally, they're, you know, looking through their sideboard, trying to figure out their plan for the next game. They're hoping you mess up so they can call a judge. That's really what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Elvish Visionary is probably the, f the best fair card in this deck. Um, I would say besides, like, the Natural Orders or, like, the Crater Hoof or any, like, the, the actual, like, win the game cards, like, Elvish Visionary is just the best card in the deck. Which is really interesting because you don't imagine yourself ever saying that sentence and having it be true. Um, but before the the legendary rule change, uh, which gave this deck quite a boon with how good Gale's, Gale's Cradle was, um, I, I remember in the past, you know, even using Force of Will on like Elvish Visionary on turn two because you just know that three turns down the down the line, if you let that Visionary resolve, you're just not going to win the game because the card's important, the ability that it is important, the fact that it's an elf. So you know the card is you know deceptively good in this deck. Yep, uh, a Viridian Shaman is just good for hitting things like Jit. Uh, Regal Force is just a nice green. Uh, sometimes you can't natural order for a Crater Hoof and kill your opponent that turn, so you can just get a Regal Force. And just draw like six cards. Yeah, draw six <laughs> cards, do it the next turn. Uh, Zenith is serves as a copy of anything. If you need like to get any of these cards, you can get them. You can also Zenith for one on turn, or Zenith for zero on turn one to get a Dried Arbor. Yep. Um, and you can also Zenith for a Crater Hoof Behemoth or a Regal Force because the deck does generate that much mana a lot of times. Um, and then Glimpse of Nature is kind of a card that used to be like the dominant card in, in elf decks before like the natural order crater hoof thing became, mm -hmm. a, became a thing. A uh, Glimpse of Nature was like the big elf card. Uh, now it's actually just kind of not even that necessary. And it's basically in there to like bait counter spells. Yeah, it's very good at getting force of will, that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> like your Glimpse of Nature is there to get countered. Uh, or if they don't counter it, just gets you a little bit of value. You're not usually winning the game off of a yeah. glimpse. A lot of times you'll glimpse on like turn two mm -hmm. after you know a strong turn one play and just draw like four or five cards and pass, and then just your opponent can't win and you beat them the next turn. Yep. So that's basically the, the way this elf deck works. Uh, I'm excited to give it a shot, and hopefully I don't mess up too badly with it. But uh, for now, we're going to talk about the sideboard. All right, we're here with the sideboard. Uh, so one of the natural predators to elves are combo decks. Um, because while Elves is a combo deck, it's usually like a turn three, turn four type deck. Most combo decks are a little bit faster than that mm -hmm. in Legacy. So uh, Elves usually finds itself kind of a dog to like Storm or uh, sh Sneak and Show or any of those kinds of decks because of that. However, you can make up for a lot of that with a sideboard. Um, so you have Cabal Therapy and Thoughtseize, just two very strong discard spells to basically try to push you into, uh, you, you want to use your early turns to disrupt them and like basically propel yourself so that you're a little bit faster than them mm -hmm. with the amount of time you're giving yourself. Uh, so one of the things that's so good about Cabal Therapy is this deck plays a million creatures. So you can Cabal Therapy, even if you miss, you can flash it back, sacrificing one of your numerous creatures and, and hit the second time. And then Thoughtseize is just a very strong in general. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you don't even need a creature in play to flashback therapy since we do have Dryad Arbor and a billion fetch lands. Exactly. Like if you have to get a card out of their hand so you don't lose, it is an option. Yeah. Uh, uh, to go with that, we also have a Gaddock Teague. Uh, Teague is, while we only have one Savannah in the deck um, and only one Teague, we do have four Green Sun Zeniths. And with the number of one drop mana accelerants the deck plays, it's not very difficult to put a Gaddock Teague into play on turn two. Mm -hmm. Against decks like Storm, that's very difficult for them to beat because they have to, ca they have to play either Tendrils or Empty the Warrens, which both cost four in order to beat you. And, uh, and they usually get there with Ad Nauseam, or Fast and Flames, yep. which costs four or more. Yep, so it pretty much shuts them out without a removal spell. Uh, beyond that, we have Confusion in the ranks. Confusion in the ranks is very good against Sneak and Show. Uh, if they cast Show and Tell, and they put in a creature and you put in a Confusion in the ranks, then anytime you play a creature past that point, or fetch for a Dryad Arbor, you get to take their Emrakul, or their Gristlebrand. 
because the way confusion works is you trade them. Also, if you put in a confusion and they put in a sneak attack, uh, I'm not entirely sure on, the, on how that ruling works, but I think you get to swap the two. Uh, but worst case is, if they do sneak attack in a creature, they have to immediately swap with one of yours. So that Emrakul that they sneak in is now actually a you know, Quirion Ranger or something. But it will be shuffled back into their graveyard. Yeah, it'll or still into be, their library. <laughs> it, it'll, it'll still get sacrificed, but you're not going to get hit with anything there. So Confusion's almost a hard lock against Sneak and Show. Uh, two Meek Stone, that's basically for any of the Delver decks. Um, basically, the way it works is any creature with th three or more power doesn't untap. None of the Elves have that, that drawback, uh, but Delver of Secrets and True Name Nemesis and Tarmogoyf all, and Nimble Mongoose frequently all, yeah. all, in the, all are in the position where they're not going to untap if the Meek Stone in play. Uh, we have another Natural Order that comes in for a lot of situations where like Natural Order is the best card. Uh, against a lot of the fair decks, like natural orders, like your best card, and you need to build a natural order for either a Crater Hoof or a Progenitus. And speaking of which, we have a Progenitus. Um, there are a lot of matchups where your opponent's going to have a lot of removal spells. For example, Blue White Red Delver has Bolts and Path and Jit um, and has like a bunch of counters to counter your guys. It's hard to stick a lot of creatures in a play to make Crater Hoof lethal. Mm -hmm. So that's where Progenitus comes in. Uh, they have no answer for progenitus, so if you can resolve a natural order and get a progenitus, the game is basically over. Yeah, really, any deck with Delver of Secrets in it uh, has a tough time against progenitus. Uh, the, there's a, the new Bug Delver deck that just won this last weekend has a couple Lilianas. Um, that's about it. But Liliana's not even that great because this deck plays like 30 creatures, yeah. so it's very hard to. <laughs> it's it's very rare that progenitus is the only creature you have in play. Yeah. They don't have Supreme Verdict. We're probably getting progenitus. Um, Abrupt Decay is the kind of card that you usually don't want in a deck like this because it's very uh, reactive and usually you want to play more proactive cards in decks like this. However, there are certain cards that are very difficult to beat, like Engineered Plague on Elf uh, is a tough one. Chalice of the Void on one. Chalice of the Void on one. Um, various things like that. Even uh, Ensnaring Bridge can be, can be rough sometimes. Uh, Graph Digger's Cage can be a problem. Yeah. So th there's it also kills Grim Lava Mancer, which is still a card too. Right, and it also kills like Grim Lava Mancer and kills Jet. kills Jet. So there's a number of like problematic cards, and Abrupt Decay like fortunately handles them all. So it's worth having those, even though you don't want to overload on them. And then the last thing we have is a World Spine Worm, which I don't know if I'd personally play World Spine Worm, but it <laughs> is big. Yeah, it is. It is big and bad. Uh, we won't comment on its art direction, but uh, I will say that I like the fact that. Uh, basically, if your opponent casts Show and Tell, you can put in World Spine Worm, attack them for 15, and then if they attack you back with Emrakul, you can sack the wor World Spine Worm and kill them on the following and swing back. So it's real cute. Yep, it's pretty sweet against Show and Tell. That's the reason <laughs> it's there, basically. Uh, you can also natural order for it, which is why it's it's World Spine Worm and not Emrakul or something. But uh, ultimately, I like the sideboard. It has a lot of options to try to hedge against some of the bad matchups. So hopefully, it plays out well. Yep.